tonight on Recruits. So we're in the cross, aren't we? This is cross. Rebecca's first night in the King's Cross jungle. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. A two-car pile-up on a wet country road puts Evan to the test. Oh, my shoulder! It's a bloody awful situation we've got here. And John has to be cruel to be kind. It's pretty confronting having to cause them pain to help them. It's 3am. Rebecca and mentor Matt are in Sydney's King's Cross. This is a goldfish nice in the bar in there. It's the first time in the infamous red light district for the mother of three. Here's the lady of the night. Oh. There's one there. The cross is notorious for drunks, drugs and violence. Tonight is no exception. Is that at McDonald's? Five eighteen. Copy. Send the job down. Is that at McDonald's? Not sure. It doesn't say. Oh, yep, yep. McDonald's King's Cross. <laughs> yeah, we're just being flagged down. We're right at the front of it. Code one B is a serious trauma. But with thousands of drunk revellers spilling out from pubs and clubs, Rebecca and Matt must exercise caution. They could be walking straight into trouble. Just after experience, you sort of know what you can handle and can't handle, and, and there was a, it was a very public place, um, quite cautiously approached the scene. Excuse me, guys. Around 200 paramedics are assaulted every year across Australia. In King's Cross, it's a regular event. Look around, um, travel lightly in terms of gear, so if we have to make a, a dash and run, we can. What's your name? What's your Mahbub? Pardon? Mahbub. Do you know where you are at the moment? Yeah. Where are you? I'm Zip Club. Yeah, OK, hang on a second. Just don't move. Don't move, mate. You've got something on your lip. No, no. Listen, listen. No. You have something on your lip. I just want to get it off. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. I'm just going to turn the bottle off your face, off the side yeah. of your face. Is that all right? Yeah. Marcou is a backpacker from France. He was punched in the face while waiting for a hamburger. You see this happen? Did you see him? Yeah, there? yeah. He was talking to them. And okay. Just the guys stood up and did and he just get punched. did he get knocked out? Yeah, he just just knocked out. So I just he, he didn't get knocked out. No. Just so we can make sure it's only the one area that you're bleeding from. That's all. It's just a lot of blood. So apparently he was assaulted, punched in the face. Was it unconscious? Um, stood up straight away after and went to throw another punch. Yeah. I just want to know where all this blood off his face has come from. Oh, there it is. There. He's got a split lip. Okay, tell him we've got to take him to the hospital. Okay. Can you come out to the ambulance with me? Where it's quieter, and that way we can look at, look, check you out better. Can you come with me? Can you come with me? Marcou's not convinced he needs to go, but Rebecca and Matt won't take no for an answer. Come on, come on. Only weeks ago, Beck learned a painful lesson about handling a distressed patient. Treat me like a jack. Jason? No, that's enough. Jason? The conversation's finished. The conversation is finished, all right? Beck learned a paramedic's most important communication tool is a sympathetic ear. There's no need to be upset, OK? I never uh, like that one. That's all right. <laughs> Listen, it's OK. You don't need to be upset. No. No, it's not the right. I think the, the human qualities that make a good paramedic is compassion, the ability to actually listen to your patient. We're just going to take you out the door here and into the hospital and get you fixed up, OK? Just to, to be on their level and, and to have a care and understanding of, of their life. Marcou wasn't concussed but received stitches in his lip before being discharged. The sympathy of paramedics may be a fonder holiday memory than the violence of the cross.
college, students learn how to extract a patient with spinal injuries from a car wreck. And you'll have 25, well actually 20 to 25 minutes to get it done. All right, so you're going to have to move quick. It's a mock scenario, but already former sales assistant Danielle is feeling the pressure of her new career. The stakes are a lot higher. If you stuff up a customer order, they're going to get mad at you in a bookstore, whereas you stuff up as a paramedic, it could be an issue of life and death. You too. You can yeah. start coming over. With the clock ticking, Danielle and former fireman Rainer lead the stretcher team. Okay. Is there anything you need us to do, mate? This is core paramedic work. One in five call-outs are to motor vehicle accidents. Right now we're just trying to figure out how to get the patient out of the car, whether we want to try and um, spin him around, take him out through the front. Um, it's pretty crammed. <laughs> OK, so how are you going to get him out? Spine board. Spine board, yeah. Under the butt. Swiveling yeah. his legs around. OK. Are you going to be able to do that with his height and his bulk? I hope so. That's oh, the only I'm alternative we've got. Oh, yeah. No, there isn't. There's another way of getting him out here with the equipment that you've got. Out the back door. Ah, yes, come in. Sorry. If, if he's back, yeah. we just come in and we can just sort of... Yep, exactly. OK. You've got about ten minutes to get these people out. They've got a plan. But get it wrong, and their patient could end up a paraplegic. All right, so we're going to try and push this. Stop. Stop. I don't want you going any further until this stretcher is in. OK. And then organise him. So on three, on three, we're all going to go this way. OK, you've got one minute, guys. Or we're going to have to pull, it, pull the pin. Three. They've made it, but only just. Oh, it's over, mate. So sorry. It's poor Carlos. That's not very comfortable at all. And if you've got injuries on top of that, I can't imagine how horrible that extrication would have been. So we need practice. Paramedic trainee Evan Terry is stationed on the rural fringes of Sydney. It's riveting television. It's an area notorious for car crashes. See that intrusion there? Well, that's where his chest was. It's a dramatic change from life at college. It's been a very steep learning curve the whole way. What you learn and the way you learn it at school compared to how it presents in reality, there's definitely a gap there. But for Evan, the gap between theory and practice is narrowing fast. Another traffic accident at Richmond. Bloody hell. 382 the driftway. It's smoke coming out of car. <laughs> Trainee paramedic Evan and mentor Craig have been called to a two-car pile-up at a notorious black spot. So they're already here, so I'll just jump out okay. and go and speak to Rolly, yep. G'day. You guys both all right? Oh, reasonably so. Yeah. Oh, OK, fair enough. Do you want me to patch those up for you? Yes, please. Apparently this woman did a U-turn in front of him or something. I don't know. You reckon? Yeah, apparently. Michelle was going shopping. Now she's trapped with a broken arm and possible neck injuries. Spine board out onto the bed? Yeah, on the bed. It's only weeks since Evan was taught how to perform a spinal board extraction at college. Now he's doing it for real. Uh, only a couple of more hands here. I'm just going to hold your head, OK, just to help you not move it, all right? So I'm just grabbing it now. Would be happy for me to remove that oxygen altogether, Mohammed? Yes, please. Fantastic. Nice and slow. Yeah, nice and slow. Oh. Yep. Yep. The head, that's all right. We drag him up on the board. Yep. One, two, three. Oh! Where's it hurting, Michelle? Oh, my shoulder! Shoulder? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh! Right, we're going well. In no time, the patient is out of the wreck. Well done. Okay. Very well done. Very great. Okay. But Evan has made a basic mistake. He's broken safety regulations by forgetting to wear his helmet inside the wreck. I noticed I wasn't wearing the helmet pretty much as soon as I was in the car and holding the head, but at that point, um, it was all a bit late. 
and everyone was busy, so I couldn't shout out to anyone. And obviously, in a job like this, you don't want to screw up your career, especially this early on, just because you've got to wear a helmet. So. The occupants of the other car were treated at the scene for minor abrasions, while Michelle was taken to hospital with a suspected broken arm and whiplash. so much let's just get inside for seven weeks trainee john williams has been in the inner city district with mentor jordan working in the job even just for this small amount of time has definitely given me a bigger picture about um, society in general and people i mean we'll pop him on our bed we'll try not move him anymore patrick is a resident in an old aged facility feeling unusually weak he called an ambulance but the steroids Patrick takes for his arthritis have cruel side effects. The biggest problem for him is that his skin is so thin from some of the medications he's on, and as soon as you touch it or apply any sort of force to it, it just shears away or rips off. It's just very hard to manage you with your skin. All right, lean forward for me. That's all right. I'll bring him back this way and then... Yeah, yeah. It was pretty confronting seeing him in the state he was in with his skin being so fragile just to touch and it would tear and start bleeding and yeah, it's pretty sad to see someone like that. How are we going to get you over onto here without ripping all your skin? Hey? How are we going to make this happen? We've shown you. Sorry? We've shown you. It's a bloody awful situation we've got here. Patrick is 82 and has no close family nearby. The job was made more difficult by the fact that Patrick was unable to move by himself and so to lift him onto the stretcher would tear his skin and, and start bleeding. So there was no other way to get him onto the chair and subsequently onto the bed but to lift him. I think John's going to come underneath you, OK? It's going to be hard, mate. It's... it's... John's going to come underneath you, OK? It's going to be hard, mate. It's, it's... John and Jordan are transporting 82-year-old Patrick to hospital. Hello. It's all right, it's all right. It's OK. His paper-thin skin tears so easily, any movement is excruciatingly painful. So as soon as you kind of move it or touch it, it breaks, he starts bleeding, so it's going to be a bit hard to get him up onto the stretcher. We're going to lift you up. It's going to be a bit unpleasant for a moment, OK? Mm -hmm. But I just need you to take a big, deep breath and think light thoughts for me, all right? Okay. It's not going to be easy, OK? And it's going to probably be a bit uncomfortable. It's pretty confronting having to cause them pain to help them. One, two, three. <laughs> you're on. You're on. That's all. That's all, mate, OK? So let's tuck you oh, down. Yeah. It's good for John to learn, like, how to manage patients in difficult environments that have complex medical problems, you know, that are quite sort of unique and not your everyday sort of run-of-the-mill stuff. Patrick's situation is distressing. Without family nearby, a compassionate paramedic can make a big difference. And what made it worse today? Why did you decide to call today? I didn't know what to do. I feel a sense of sadness that a lot of the older population in our society is sort of relegated to these life circumstances. At the same time, I have a job to do and I have to put aside that sadness or that internal conflict and, um, and provide care to that patient. They say that we're always going to be coming across cases like this, I guess, Getting old isn't always as pretty as it sounds, but, I mean, yeah, it's not really until you kind of get out there and you see it in, in your face that it really hits home. Sadly, Patrick died a week later from a complicated series of illnesses. Out in the suburbs, 21-year-old Carly and mentor Jane have been on the road together for six weeks. I've got an 85 year old guy that's um, fallen out of a tree, as you do at 85. So, um, go and have a look. What's your name? Frederick. Frederick. Oh, Alright, Frederick. Funny. Do you remember falling off the ladder? I remember putting the ladder against the tree. Right, but you don't remember falling off the ladder? No. Do you remember walking up the ladder? 
Frederick's memory loss indicates he's been knocked out. If so, he may have sustained serious brain injury. Have you been up since you fell, Frederick? I, no, I... You've just laid here. I've been here. I've been here. I don't know where... Where's the ladder? Frederick's son, Stephen, found his dad 20 minutes earlier. That's my dad. He's 84. I'm 61. I live next door, and I went up to my place to get some things, and I was there for about 10 minutes before coming back to expect to find him in the kitchen, but he wasn't there. He was on the ground here. He said, how'd I get here? He'd had no short-term memory at all. Well, I can remember it all now. I was, gonna, I was trying to cut that branch off to keep the possum off the roof. Oh, OK. That's good. It's all coming back. Yep. Have you ever had any a fall like this before? Not for a long time. So you have fallen before? Oh, I think so. I, I mean, I must have because I've, I've been climbing ladders and stuff, you know, for, for too the past long. 60 years. <laughs> At 84, Frederick still works full-time as an electrician. He runs a square dance on Monday nights and he leads a full and healthy life. OK. All right, mate. What we're going to do is we'll take you out to hospital and get him to have a look at that shoulder. I think it's a bit of a rest will do, isn't it? You, so you don't want to go to hospital? No way. That sounds like dead. But the fact that you don't remember it worries me a bit. No. Yeah, because you can't remember it. I know you don't want well, to, yeah, but I think but look, I mean, I've had concussion before and it comes back after a while. If Frederick doesn't want to go to hospital, Jane and Carly can't force him. People need to know that by not coming with us that, that serious consequences could happen. He could be having a really slow bleed in his brain and he might die. All right, well, I think we should I go up to hospital. I remember off the ladder. No way. 84-year-old Frederick is concussed after falling off a ladder. He's refusing to go to hospital. It's just better to get checked out just so they can do a scan. It's just a bit of a worry that you can't remember and that, you've, that you have fallen from that height. I don't think that's a good idea at all. How come? Uh, well, I just... I don't, I don't need it. I think you might. <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah. I know that no, you're I tough, just, but... i just got to do something with the shoulder, that's all. Yeah, uh. well, it's only going to be sore in the morning. So how about we just go up now, get an X-ray of the shoulder? Well, we have a lot of our own alternative treatments or complementary. Right. And... X-ray is one of the things we shy away from. I mean, we can't obviously drag him to hospital, but, but we're saying it's probably our, our advice is definitely that he go to hospital and be checked out. And How if you don't you... want him to have an X-ray, then he doesn't have to have an no. X-ray. Do, do you don't own... want to go to hospital. Do right. scans. If I want an X-ray, I'll go and get one tomorrow. All right, well, how about we get you up? I mean, at the moment, you're still on the floor. What do you think, Frederick? Do you want us to give you a hand up? He knows himself well, and he's strong and robust and um you know going to hospital is sort of like giving in hey. how's that just got a sore shoulder that's all you're not dizzy at all no then we should run you up to hospital no all right you can take him inside cars, I'll go and get her. All right, but thank you for the offer. Having assessed Frederick's head and neck, Jane and Carly have to accept Fred is willing to take the risk and not go to hospital. Yeah, it is frustrating um, when, when you're called um, and when he's fallen, where he's fallen, how he's fallen, the fact he can't remember, but look, you can't force him to go to hospital. What a way to finish the Sunday. So I need to go in now and make sure that he's aware that he might die um, overnight and as long as he's happy with that, then... That's all we can do, really. All righty, so what we need to get you to do, Frederick, is we need to get you to sign this card. You need to know that there are serious consequences of staying at home and not being properly that's, assessed that's by a doctor. That's all right with me, yeah. OK, because we're not <coughs> doctors and we can't do a full and complete medical examination here in your home. That's OK, I understand. Okay. <coughs> I understand what you're saying, but I'm not that worried. But don't be proud, OK? Ring us back if you get worried about yourself. Yeah. OK, ring us back. I'll go uh, see a doctor mate. tomorrow about that shoulder, OK? All right, mate. You take care. Thanks and for all the travel. we don't see you later. He might be that, you know, the 10% that have a fall and have a slow, slow bleed in their brain that's then going to mean that they end up having a, a significant stroke and being debilitated. He could go from being a, a super independent 83-year-old man who, like his son says, go to, goes to work as an electrician every day to um, being a vegetable. Frederick was lucky not to be in that 10%. He was back climbing ladders the next day. As for Carly, she's fast learning from Jane through hands-on experience. 
Working with Jane's been great. She knows a lot. She's, she's taught me heaps. So I'm really, I'm really appreciative and grateful that I had her as, as a mentor and, you know, look forward to a couple years down the track, getting back in there with her and I'm uh, qualified and I, know I can teach her maybe something. So it'll be good. But Carly has already mastered an unusual skill, one she's kindly offered to teach Jane. Oh, I can't believe we're doing this. Carly is a regular skydiver. Jane has <laughs> never jumped before. It's a funny little role reversal. Carly's been um, educating me on what I've got to do and how I've got to either scream or shut my mouth so my mouth doesn't flop around, so it should be good for a laugh. Recruits. There's blood everywhere, the phones are ringing. Carly on a night of chaos. And it is actually still bleeding. Danger on the front line for Rebecca. Get out of here! Can you get onto the police, get him here urgently? And a life rests in Evan's hands. And for more recruits action, log on to the website.